Thank you. Uh, it's a good thing we don't have to fill the entire audience here. It's an uh, impressive place. Um, so, uh, good morning to you all. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, why tweens aren't playing your games, and in specific, why tween girls aren't playing your games. Um, so if you can't stand the call of pink, maybe now is the time to run away, but I assure you it will be quite interesting. A um, little bit about myself. I've been in the, in the games industry, creating games for almost 15 years. Originally started out in core gaming as a designer, as an artist, so I know that side of the industry. Um, but about five years ago, I joined Spill Games, and since then, I've been spending around 50% of my time on the girl demographic. So I've seen my fair share of rainbows and horses and uh, pink dresses. And I like them. So, um, a quick slide about Spill Games. For those of you who don't know it, you already had a nice intro uh, just a minute ago. Um, we are a leading independent social gaming platform with uh, about 15 languages um, in 30 countries. We have uh, a lot of users, about 200 million uniques a month. They play an awful lot of games every day. And we source our games through our in-house studios, which is about 10% of what we do and the rest we get through um, other uh, developers. So we work a lot with indie developers, the kind of people you could see uh, walking around at the Flash Gaming Summit this week. Uh, but we also team up with uh, AAA developers like Big Point and Digital Chocolate. So we have uh, targeted platforms for girls, uh, tweens, uh, girls, teens and families. Uh, but for today's session, we'll be focusing specifically uh, on the girls channel. Uh, and in specific, uh, the US uh, portal of uh, girlsgunegames.com, um, which is focusing on girls 8 to 12, and we have around 7.5 million uniques every month. So, a quick step back. Um, when did girl gaming really start? Well, if you look at the evolution of gaming, um, it kind of started in the 80s with arcades and this is the kind of thing that we were watching on TV. I'm sure some of you were around that time as well. And this was how girls were supposed to look. These were the kind of games we were playing in the beginning, and that moved into uh, console gaming. And at that time, there were pretty much no uh, girl-specific games. It doesn't mean that the girls weren't playing games, um, but uh, pretty much all the developers were male, and they were creating the games they liked to play themselves. Um, and perhaps some of the girls were playing these games, but there was nothing created specifically and only for them. And this situation uh, remained the same in the 90s. Um, when consoles entered the, uh, the household, the girls were uh, listening to this kind of music and watching this on TV. And this was the kind of game you could buy in the shop. Um, so where were the girl games? Moving forward into the next decade, um, this is when casual gaming really started to pick up. This was the kind of phone we were using at that time. And at that time, only 12% of the population, of the gaming population, was female. So it was pretty much a male-dominated industry. Um, this, of course, started to change, and uh, a lot of the people around here were part of that, that evolution, um, with the start of casual gaming really going after that female demographic. And followed quickly by um, online gaming portals like Pogo, uh, to a situation a few years ago where finally the girls started to get their own dedicated gaming products. And if you look at Girls Car Games, our girls platform, we already started with that maybe four, five years ago. And at that time there was very, very little in that space. Um, now we are in a situation that phones evolved into fully fledged uh, gaming platforms and about 50% of all gamers are female. So, a lot has happened, but if you look at the entire evolution of gaming, um, the fe girl gamers are just, you know, it only just started to happen. So, who are they? Um, research is called as uh, Generation C, that's the tween, the tween gamer, or the tween, the tween girl gamer, um, eight to 12, Three C's stand for create. They like create, collaborate, and communicate. I'm trying to remember that. And they're all online. They have an awful lot of spending power. And this money is, of course, uh, not in their own pockets, but it's in the pockets of the parents. But there is a lot out there. 
they consume an awful lot of media in a very fragmented way. So they hop from platform to platform and from offering to offering. Um, they spend more and more time on mobile devices. Um, research shows it's about two hours average. I spent uh, the last weekend with my twin cousins, uh, three girls, and I think that that number is really on the low side. They seem completely inseparable uh, <laughs> from their mobiles. Um, in the US, uh, the majority already owns a smartphone, and this is, of course, growing rapidly. And we see that the amount of time they spend with television is decreasing sharply. So what do they like to play? What, like, what do they like to see in gameplay? This is something we need to understand if we want to make games for them. Um, and if you look at ga their gaming uh, needs in general, even beyond video games, um, fantasy is really important. And this is slightly different from boys. Boys are very results driven. They like competitive gaming uh, uh, behavior. And girls are much more into their fantasy world, especially when they're young. Um, they like to be engaged in collaborative uh, gameplay with their friends. Um, they really enjoy being creative and they enjoy games that allow them to be creative. And a very, very important aspect is roleplay. This is an essential part of uh, development in children and games that allow them to roleplay uh, typical sort of um, female activities and careers uh, is something that really, really works, works very well for this audience. And this can, can shift from the really mundane, like cooking dinner, to being a surgeon, for example. Um, they are almost obsessed with their future lives. And they think about this a lot. And games that allow them to explore their future lives are very, very popular. So, looking at the specific age groups within girls, um, gameplay starts, of course, very young, with babies almost. Um, we don't make uh, games for babies, so we started four years. So the first group you can identify are between four and six, and they are in what we call the discovery phase. And they see a lot of things for the first time. And they're really into sort of the pink and glittery stuff, princesses, um, you know, a brand like uh, Disney Princess is really going after this, this audience. And they're completely emerged in their little fantasy world. Then when they turn seven or eight, this changes. And they start to look more towards the outer world for inspiration and aspiration. Um, they're really, uh, really important to have best friend. And their best friend almost becomes more important than their parents. And they start to really enjoy um, creative gameplay, to be able to express themselves. And then finally moving into uh, the, the tween bracket, age to 12. This is when they really start to form their own identity. And you see, for example, that um, fashion, makeup becomes really important and their peer group and peer group pressure is are really important as well and i'm sure you can remember this from being being at school that you know the peer pressure coming from a, a group of girls can be uh, can be quite extreme and also at this age um, they almost become obsessed uh, with becoming older and becoming being part of the grown-up world um, looking at media consumption uh, these girls are really loyal followers of the big brands coming out of uh, TV and film. Here are two examples. And they're really into music. Um, music programs, but also music celebrities. And you can see by, you know, through these talent shows, for example, that um, these girls have a big say in the final results. You know, if you just look at the winners from American Idol the past few years, you know that they have been voting. Mobile phones have become really important for them. Uh, they can send up to 500 messages uh, every day. And for those of you who have kids in this, in this age group or you know people, then this is a source of a lot of argument in families at the moment. Um, you know, talking about un unlimited data plans and stuff like that. Um, they will send messages continuously to their friends day and night. Uh, and of course, they are also starting to use mobile phones as a gaming device. Um, up until recently, their console of choice has very much been the Nintendo DS uh, and its various spin-offs. And a company like Ubisoft really jumped on this market uh, with their Imagine line, offering loads of, loads of careers to explore in, in, in really fun games. Um, looking at online gaming destinations, you won't find these girls uh, en masse on, 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 uh, on Facebook, for example, because of the age restrictions. 
and also parents holding back because it's not a safe environment. So you will find them at these sort of major destination sites like Barbie.com, uh, Stardoll, and also Girls Go Games. And if you have a game and you want to reach this audience, then that's a really, really you know, practical way to get to them uh, in, in, in a big way. Um, so now you're thinking, that's great, you know, Spill Games, you knew that this was a big market opportunity. Um, you understand this audience, it must have been really easy for you to create loads of cool games. Um, well, it hasn't been, especially in the beginning, we had you know, quite some trial and error to, uh, to get to a point where we started to release games that were really, um, really uh, enjoyable for, for these girls. Um, but over the years, we've built up uh, a lot of data. Um, we, I think we are now at a point that we're quite comfortable in being able to, to, you know, to share some results for you about what they like and what you should do and what you should not do when you're designing uh, games for girls. So, without further ado, the tween girl top genres. Um, I've got a top five. Anyone want to make a guess what is on the first place? Excellent. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Um, and of course, this makes sense. You know, if, if you look at what I just uh, mentioned earlier, they are really into fashion, creating their own identity, um, experimenting with new looks, and you know, any game that offers them this this uh, a way to simulate this uh, is very popular. And this is by far the most popular category uh, on girls or games, but also in the in the large tween girl gaming world. And a product like It Girl, for example, or our own Shopaholic is really right in, the, in, in that sweet spot. In second place, role play. This is maybe not a category that you used to uh, for this kind of game. Um, role play is quite wide, um, but it's really important. It's an essential part of uh, development in children to be able to role play um, vocational uh, scenarios, uh, careers, or even quite mundane activities. And, this starts really early, uh, but it carries on throughout childhood. And for girls, it's, of course, very important as well. And there's a lot of research that points out to this, and you see across the world that the same sort of professions and activities are really popular. Um, you know, the top careers that girls like to think about, for example, are uh, being a vet, being a doctor, being a teacher, or being a fashion model, or all three of them you know, in different parts of your life. Um, and again, you know, Ubisoft really, really, really uh, jumped into that with the Imagine line, but we have a lot of uh, games and girls for games as well. For example, this is a, a cooking game, Sarah's Cooking Class. Uh, we have loads and loads of um, versions of that, and you just learn how to make a certain dish. It's quite instructional. Um, so role play is definitely not uh, becoming a dark elf and building your skill tree. You know, it's about careers. And I guess you could almost say that um, the beauty and fashion category is kind of part of the role play category as well. On third place, animals, pets, and caring. I see some knots in the audience, so that's, uh, that's a good sign. Um, if you can combine caring and animals uh, into one game, um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee for success, but it, it does work very well. Um, Nintendogs is, of course, an obvious example of a game that was really resonating with the girl audience. Um, they want to have a pet and they love caring for a pet. And we have uh, a variety of games that, that, that cater for that need as well. And the entire sort of horse game phenomenon is of course also part of this. Then in third place, maybe a little bit less uh, obvious, um, personality tests and self-expression. Um, if you would ask these girls what their favorite topic is, they probably wouldn't give you a, an honest answer, but if they would, and then this is what their favorite topic is. They like to, you know, they like to talk about themselves and they like to share uh, who they are with the rest of the world. And you can see this in magazines. You know, personality tests in girl magazines are really, really important. It's, 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 it's been there for ages. And we picked up on that uh, a few years ago and we, um, we created some uh, visual personality tests um, first really simple and then a bit more advanced. This is an example where you choose a bag and then you fill it up with uh, items you would want to take with you on your holiday and then the professor, Professor, professor Holiday, will step in 
analyze your bag and tell you what kind of a person you are. And then, of course, you share that with the rest of the world. And the first time we did a game like this, we built this game in about two weeks. Not this one, but the first in the series. And it was popular for almost a year. And uh, we've had like, um, I would say, 30 million views in just the, fir the first year. Um, so we, we, we really felt we were onto something. And that this, is, uh, this gives the girls an opportunity to check with a tool what they like. And this is something they really enjoy. On the other side of the equation, we have games that enable the girls to express themselves in a creative way. Um, User-generated content, if you want. Um, and we have there were two ways to do it, quite f sort of like the free flow way, where you can make an actual drawing, like this example, or more sort of in a clip art kind of way. Uh, they both work. And I guess just looking at these two pictures, you can really tell that there are two different personalities behind that. And um, we, if you include comments and, 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 and user-generated content like this on Girls Go Games, we have 80,000 pieces of content being uh, submitted every day. So that's, that's an extreme amount. Then in fifth place, um, this is something you, know, you, sh you shouldn't think that only the pink and girly stuff is popular with girls. Um, uh, we have a broad category, what we, and we call that adventure. Uh, this is also the level-based stuff, platform games and things like that. And we often find um, that you look at a game and you, it might look like it's built for boys. When you go into the data, actually there are more girls playing than boys. For example, we have a racing game on the left. Um, if you can get girls beyond the first screen, and we've done that by adding, for example, a girl character on the bike and the dolphin in there. And if you go into the game, it's pretty hardcore. It's motorbikes and, uh, and quads and jumping and racing. They really, really enjoy it. Um, and so it, it, it makes sense to remember that. And for example, the virtual worlds are in the same bracket, you know, Habo, Club Penguin, uh, these sort of properties have a lot of girls playing in there. Um, I'm kind of aware of the sentiment that um, there's, there's sometimes a question, should, you, should all your games be so overly girly? Should it always be pink? Um, well, the reality is that a lot of girls really enjoy that, and we try to make them happy. But of course, there's also a smaller percentage, the tomboys, for example, that like different games, or they like to, you know, if you give them an option to choose between the princess and the devil, they will choose the devil. So we try to add elements in our games to also uh, cater for that audience. So whenever you start to make games for them, try to remember that in the back of your mind, no two girls are the same. Then, Quickly on to the, uh, the top design tips. First, the downs. Uh, ignore the parents. If the parents don't like you or your game, you can forget about it. They are the gatekeepers. Don't be too wordy. Um, we see a lot of games with very text-heavy tutorials. Um, don't make it look like homework. They like to learn about careers, but if it feels like uh, study homework, they will run away screaming. Don't overcomplicate your control scheme. And don't trust your intuition, especially when you are, like me, a 41-year-old guy. <laughs> the do's, instead of trusting your intuition, uh, get to know what they want. Watch their TV shows, read their magazines, learn what games they like, um, talk to them, really live their world. Mind the real world for inspiration. Go to a toy store, see what they like. It's so simple. Focus on the visuals. Um, a lot of girl games were uh, hampered by not having a, a high production values. If you just look at, for example, My Horse from Natural Motion, you can see what a little bit of extra polish can do for this audience, and it really uh, there's a big payback there. Again, keep it simple. We have games that are just have one button control schemes, and they work really well. And finally, love your game. You know, you really need to enjoy what you're doing. I've been doing it for five years. I'm uh, enjoying it uh, more every day. Um, if you don't love what you're doing, this audience will, you know, will, they will figure you out and uh, they will punish you for it. So that's it for today. Thank you.
Uh, thank you for sharing your, your perspective. Uh, um, I would love to say that I uh, respectfully disagree with, with the approach. And um, I think that um, we have a big problem today in our society, and, and partially this is um, because of the media that we are producing for our young girls. Um, only 25% of people who go into science, for example, are female. We have at about 6% uh, women at CEO levels in this country. And there are a lot of people who are very concerned about this. A lot of women who are very concerned about this. And uh, a lot of mothers who would like to see other options instead of pink and fairies and an aspirational model for girls, which is to be a zookeeper, a fashion designer, and a baker. Uh, these are the three main things that if you ask girls, they tell you they want to do. Uh, you don't see as many people saying that they want to be a superhero or a, a rocket scientist. Uh, this is a problem. And uh, I believe that by perpetuating the stereotypes in the games we produce for our girls, we are doing them a disservice. Uh, it is perfectly fine for a percentage of the population to choose and love pink, but I believe that if you ask people around, you will hear that there are people who are concerned and would love other options as well. Thank you. Thoughts on yeah, well, like I said, we, we are very aware of the sentiment. Um, I guess, I mean, in what we do is we, we, we try to, you know, we try to listen to girls and we try to offer them the games they like. So, um, and a, a big part of, of, of this audience is, is liking that's typically girly girl stuff. Uh, that said, we have been, we, we, we've been making quite a lot of games and we have been experimenting with kind of sort of off the path uh, options. And we do try to to offer them uh, the option to you know to steer away from from um, this sort of the, the, the typical stuff. But in the end, you know, as as a, as a company, um, we are making um, basically entertainment products for this audience uh, for, for for what they like. Um, but are, you know, we, we, we are aware of what you're saying there. 